Now that we know how to create selectors, we're ready to create some actions that use these selectors. A global is a list of actions, or commands, that can perform a variety of actions. Every project comes with a default one called main. These globals can be deleted. And new ones can be added. Also, globals can be used from within other globals. This placeholder is where we'd put our first action or command. If we click the placeholder, a list of categories and actions will be shown. We can double-click any category to see the actions that are inside. And if we double-click any action, the action will be selected and replace the placeholder. Another way to select an action is to click a placeholder, or in this case an action, and start typing. And when the action or category we want is highlighted, press the tab key to select it. We can add a subsequent placeholder by right-clicking an action and selecting Add Sibling, or by left-clicking it and pressing Enter. We can also remove actions and placeholders by right-clicking them and selecting Edit and then Delete. Or by left-clicking it and pressing the Delete key twice. In general, every change that can be made with the mouse, can also be made with the keyboard, and vice versa. Most of the actions we will use here produce something called a sequence. A sequence is a list of browser states. And a browser state is like a snapshot of the browser after some actions, such as loading a page, clicking a button, or selecting an element, have been performed on the browser. But unlike an image, a browser state contains the full set of actions that led to that state. This makes it possible for any state to be fully restored on a browser, so that further actions can be performed on it, either to produce new states, or to extract data from it. Since sequences are lists of states, these lists may contain zero or more states, depending on which action is used. For instance, the browser load action, which I will add by selecting load URL from the wizard to load the current page, outputs a sequence with a single state. The state, in this case, is the state of the browser after loading the given URL, and if I add a new sibling, the action below will run on this page. The browser turn pages action, on the other hand, is an action that produces a sequence with one or more states. Each state represents each of the result pages, including the first one. To make it functional, I need to provide a selector that selects the next button. I can do this by selecting the next button on the page, then right-clicking the next button placeholder, and selecting Create Selector from Samples. A placeholder will be shown for me to type the name of the new selector, so I will type Next Button to give it this name, and then press the Tab key to commit the changes. Note that the selector has also been added to the selectors list on the right. Since the browser turn pages action will run in the page loaded by the action above, it will produce a sequence containing all of the result pages. And if I add a sibling here, whatever action I select will run on each of these pages. I will clear the selection and then press the detect list button to select each of the results on the page. Now I will right-click this placeholder and select Create Selector from Samples, and call my selector List Item. This selector will run on each of the pages, and in each of them, it will produce a new set of browser states, in each of which a single list item will be selected. Note that, during an extraction, the action of selecting an element actually changes the state of the browser. And when an element is selected, the action below will run on this element and its child elements only. As such, selectors are actions that produce one browser state for each selected element, which can be zero or more. Now I will add an extract action. This action can take a list of column names and values, and it typically will be the last action. For this sample, I will just add three columns. The first one will be called title, and for its value, I will select a few sample titles on the page, right-click the value placeholder, and select Create Selector from Samples. I will call this selector Business Title. Now I will right-click the title column, and select Add Sibling to add a new column, which I will call URL. For its value, I will reuse the Business Title selector, and add another sibling. Here, I will select the Gather Link action. 
Since business titles are also links, this action will gather the target URL of the link. Finally, I will add a column called phone. And for its value, I will select a few sample phone numbers on the page and create a new selector called phone number. At this point, we have a working extraction logic. Let's go step by step over what this extract action will do. Recall that the list item selector above will produce a list of states, in each of which a particular list item will be selected. And when an element is selected, the action below runs on this element and its children only. Let's suppose we're at the point in the extraction process, where this particular item has been selected by the list item selector, and the extract action is about to run. The business title selector will find the title element inside this item, and its text will be extracted to the title column. For the next column, the business title selector will select the title again, and then the gather link action will run while the title is selected. This will cause the URL in the title link to be extracted into the URL column. Finally, the phone number selector will select the phone element inside this item, and its text will be extracted. If there happens to be many phone numbers for a single business, only the first one will be extracted. I'll mention on another video how we could extract many items from a single business. One thing that I did not mention about browser states, is that they may be coupled with values. If we hover over the business title selector, we can see a tool tip that says, sequence, string. This means that each state produced by this action is coupled with a string, which is just another name for text. In the case of selectors, the text is the text of the element, so in this case the value would be the text of the title. This is why there's no need to add a gatherer below a selector to extract the text of the element, which is what we're doing on the title and phone columns. When an actions outputs a value, this value can also be stored in a variable to be used later on. If I right-click the selector and select output result, this will produce a placeholder for me to enter a variable name, such as title text. This variable will hold the text of the title, and I'll be able to use it anywhere on subsequent actions. On the other hand, actions such as browser, turn pages, produce states with no values, which it why it shows sequence, void when I hover over it, where void represents the lack of value. Finally, there are actions that keep the previous state as is, and are just used for the value they produce. For instance, all the gathering actions, such as gather, link, will leave the state produced by the action above untouched, and output a value, which in this case, is the target URL of the title. On the next video, I will run this global and explain how the extraction process works.